Number 12, we have another block on an incline, and this time we're looking for static friction. So let's go ahead and draw our free body diagram. We have normal force going perpendicular to the surface, the weight going straight down, and the friction force would oppose the impending motion. The block is at rest, so it is static friction force. And that's it for our forces. So we look at the weight, which has a y component going down perpendicular to the surface, an x component going to the left parallel to the surface, wx, wy. Since we're at rest, that means that we're in equilibrium. The sum of the forces in the x equals zero. That's what we care about is the x direction because we're looking for friction. So the friction force must balance the x component of the weight. So we can say friction minus wx is zero, or friction equals wx. wx is opposite that given angle, so it's going to be w or mg sine of theta. Number 13. So what I'd like to do for this one is just kind of set it up. There's not going to be too many calculations on the test because there's no time for that on the test. So we just want to really be able to set up this kind of problem. And what's the main idea? What are we supposed to get out of this problem? So this problem is like the example that we did in class with the boat that had a couple of forces acting on it. This object right here has a force that is clockwise from the positive x-axis. So if you have the positive x-axis going to the right and you're going clockwise, that means you're going this way. That's going to be 59 degrees. And then we have, and that's a force of 65 newtons. And then we have one that's going clockwise from the positive y-axis, which is the positive y-axis is here, we're going clockwise. This way, this angle is 32, and this force is 35 newtons. So we have two forces acting on this object, and we want to know which way, well, how much is it going to accelerate. So the takeaway message from this problem is that it's a second law problem, that the sum of the forces are going to equal to ma, but we have to separate x and the y directions. So what you need to get out of this problem is can you write down the components of each force? Pay attention to the, the direction and the angles that you're given. So since my forces are labeled with numbers here, I'll just go ahead and write the numbers in. But we need the x component of the 35 newton force, which is over here, going to the right and it's opposite the angle, so it's going to be 35 sine of 32. And then the x component of the 65 newton force, which is also going to the right, it's adjacent to the angle, it's going to use cosine, plus 65 cosine of 59 degrees. Those are the only two forces in the x direction, that was a typo here, that should equal to max. So we can divide all of this by the mass to get Ax by itself. So Ax is equal to all of this. You can get a number out and then do the same thing for the y direction. This 35 Newton force has an upward component which is adjacent to the 32 angle. So 35 cosine of 32. And then the 65 newton has a y component going down here. So it's negative and it's opposite the angle. So it uses sine minus 65 sine of 59 degrees. And that's going to equal MAY. So once again, we can divide each side by M. And we can solve for AY. This will give us a y.
all of this. And then to find the acceleration, well, if we know the x and the y components of the acceleration, then we can just use the Pythagorean theorem to find the magnitude of the acceleration. So once again, we don't want to get bogged down with numbers, but we just want to be able to set up this type of problem. Separate the x and the y directions and make sure that you pay attention. Is their acceleration, are you equal to max? Or are you in equilibrium? Is it equal to zero? That's really the takeaway message. We're going to skip number 14 because it's the exact same problem as the traffic light problem for which a video has already been posted.